So the thing that came to mind was uh, the this recently revived magazine Tribune, which is one of these venerable publications, the old left, that's just been reclaimed by young leftists. And they adopted this Michael Foote quote as its comeback mission statement, uh, sustaining the old cause with the old weapons. So I'm sorry to say, but the boring obvious truth of the matter is that the primary event of the end of the end of history, at least in America, is Bernie fucking Sanders, um, specifically because he's revived the old cause and the old weapons. Uh, Bernie just never budged, and after the fall of the wall and the collapse of the Soviet Union and the dismantling of the European welfare states and the decline of their union movements, he just kept going with the exact same program, doing the exact same thing his entire career. And I think the essence of the Sanders phenomenon is this serious reconsideration of what's possible based on this prematurely retired idea of politics that are actually still relevant. And this isn't to say nothing has changed, but a lot of people are coming around to the idea that it's still the same fight it was before the end of history. It's the same conflict with the same players. It's capitalism versus humanity. Um, Bernie was just like never phased by it. He, he kept the faith and that has a real chance of paying off. And if you think about it, like, what a romantic, everyone else came to the conclusion that it was the end, that, like, socialism was this um, brief glitch in human history. And Bernie knew that it was the end of history or the end of class politics that was the, the actual glitch, and that eventually we'd come back around to it. Um, so I don't want to jump the gun because I agree with Adolf Ray Jr. that there's no left in America and hasn't been for some time. I used to wonder why there weren't more Bernies, and I think I've arrived at the conclusion that the end of history was just unbelievably traumatic in ways that we've had a lot of difficulty reconciling with. Um, there was an article in Damage magazine called Everything All of the Time that refers to this as an inability to mourn the defeat because that would require confronting like a very painful loss. Um, and the Freudian psych psychobabble, like a uh, compliments of Carl Abraham says that the mourners become manic and will quote devour everything that comes their way and like what a better diagnosis of the post-Marxist left right um, they talk about the devouring mania to just refer to niche intellectual trends have been employed to essentially procrastinate um, confronting that defeat so like intersectionality, Trotskyism, mutual aid and solidarity, economy, communes, horizontalism, occupation, autonomism, post-Marxism, post-work, insurrectionism, post-political populism, fully automated luxury communism, anything to avoid acknowledging our loss. Um, and the article concludes by saying that uh, most of these people didn't live through the 60s, but uh, what they are mourning was a lack of political possibility a time when the left was, quote, clear thinking about the nature of economic exploitation and still to some degree had organic links to a working class base. That political power is what is being unsuccessfully mourned today, and a successful reconstitution requires moving the mourners past their temporary meaning of freeing them from the influences of those with true circular insanity, you know, like professional leftists. Um, so uh, Bunga spends a lot of time trying to break from this lifestyleist leftist nostalgia, which I think is a great project. But I do believe that in America, we are in desperate need of a reconciliation with our past. Um, and I don't mean our past as like Americans or American history. I mean our past as socialists, like a, a past where we believe that history wasn't yet written. And I think with Bernie, we can allow ourselves sort of to mourn, maybe not even for communism or socialism specifically, for, but for a past that really actually did hold more promise and potential and ambition than our present. And this isn't to say there isn't still a lot of lingering pathology endemic to the movement. Um, the hangover of this inability to mourn persists in, you know, the movement as a kind of what I call political pedophilia, most recognizable as the tendency to seek out both youth and novelty manifesting in what Americans might call activistism or what Brits might call movementism, like chasing whatever the progressive zeitgeist is to make us appear relevant, thereby abandoning the most timeless principles of Marxism and class politics. To conclude, with Bernie, we've seen some acceptance of our past and our losses, and it's not nostalgia, it's moving towards resolution, because you can't escape grief, not if you want to keep moving forward, not if you want to reclaim those virtues and victories and analysis and ambition of a left tradition that I believe that we, in our grief and confusion, abandoned too hastily. Our hearts are broken, so we tried a bunch of weird, eat, pray, love, hippie bullshit in an attempt to not deal with the pain, but now we are ready to love again, and there's no school like the old school, class war.